Tannehill fires quickly, caught Johnson. 30, 35, 40, 50. Johnson to the 40. Johnson a cut to the 35. Johnson hit, stays on his feet inside the 30, and is finally taken down by Lattimore. Marcus Johnson, his fifth catch of the year, and a big win indeed for the Tennessee Titans. 50 yards and a first down. Welcome back. Fourth hour. Hashtag fastest four hours in radio is upon you. It's upon us. We're blessed to bring it to you. Courtesy of all four seasons, Garage Doors in Nashville. It's Jay Martin and Ramon, 11-year NFL veteran and ball for life. Ramon Foster, Jonathan Schaefer, Jason Martin at Ramon Foster at Schaefer on sports at Jmart Radio at Jmart and Ramon. Titans win 23 to 21. One of the big reasons why on a day where yards were at a premium, points were at a premium, the man that we have on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline right now, Titans wide receiver Marcus Johnson. Marcus, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you doing? We're doing well, too. Um, you know, I, I'd read a couple of things from you over the past I'd read a couple of pieces about you over the last uh, few weeks. You know, you had a decent day against Jacksonville, and then it kind of went away for you. And you had said and been quoted as saying the last couple of weeks have been tough. I just felt like I kind of hit a wall, but I just locked in, kept grinding it out, trusting in my routine. And then yesterday you said God's timing is perfect. Amen to that, first of all. But how much did you need the 50-yard play to just kind of remind yourself, hey, man, I know how to do this. I can get this job done and just kind of build on that play. Um, it was big for me. You know, as a receiver, a lot of our game can be uh, caught up in that mental block of just making a play. And if we might go a few weeks where we, we aren't as productive as we want to be. You know, we, we need those type of plays just to build that confidence back up and that, that mindset that, man, I can go out here and consistently do it. So that was huge for me. So what do, what what happens mentally to you when you're not getting as many targets? Uh, Tannehill's not looking your way as much. A lot of people said nice things about you in the – you know, before the season started, and you obviously want to live up to that. You've been in a couple of different locations before, and you've seen success on some of those teams as well. But uh, what was going through your mind during that time frame when it was when it was a little bit difficult, when it would have been maybe a little bit dark for you? Man, it was like I, you know, like I said yesterday, trusting the routine. But I guess my biggest thing was trying to find that chemistry with Ryan. Just trying to find ways to make a play. Uh, I feel like I have been doing well on special teams, so mm -hmm. um, I was I was still heavily involved in that aspect. But um, just finding a way to help contribute as as a receiver on this team and um, building that confidence with Ryan. And I knew early in that game, making a play would set the tone for the rest of that game. So mm -hmm. uh, it came with a quick now route, quick slant. And from there, we just had the connection going, and that's the biggest thing, finding that chemistry and finding a way to keep it, not just this game, but throughout the season. Yeah, and you, you mentioned something too, confidence. Man, you guys have reeled off six in a row. I think the hottest win streak of any team in the NFL right now. From a player's perspective, and I know each opponent you got to respect, but walking in the stadiums now, you got to have a feeling of, man, we, we're going to win every game we got. You know, our mindset really is just just find a way. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and going into this week, it was uh, we're not trying to prove anyone but ourselves right. You know, we we put the work in during camp. We know we we know we're capable of. So just week to week, proving that to ourselves and going out there, no matter who we line up against, and believing that you know we we trust what the coaches' game plan are, and and we fight for four quarters, we'll find a way uh, to come out on top. So with that being said, too, you know, it's, it's getting later into the season right now as far as, you know, playoff position and seeding and stuff like that. You've been a part of a championship team also with Philly, man. Like, do you feel some of the same things when it comes down to this team of uh, losing Derrick Henry, having to find a way to win games and be more productive offensively? Julio goes to IR. Y'all got a bunch of storylines that lead up into, hey, this could be a magical ending if you, you do the right, right things the rest of the season. Yeah, man, it's – you know, that's just guaranteed. And this business is, you know, what have you done for us lately? Yeah. Uh, it's still it's still early. We got a lot of games left and this is the pivotal part of the season where teams are either getting better or worse. And uh I mean there's no excuses. You know, whether guys go down and uh, the mindset is next man up, we have to find a way to keep to continue to go out there and compete and find a way to win. So uh, that's been our mindset and Vrabel does a great job of instilling that in us and trusting us as players that when he says next man up, he truly believes in that. He trusts us, and he gives those up, those uh, he gives us those opportunities to go out there and produce. 
So trust is an interesting word. Marcus Johnson, Titans wide receiver, joining us on the line. As a, as a receiver in this offense, and Derrick Henry's out, and we all know that, and now it's whoever's else, whoever else is on that roster has to step up and get the job done. How much trust do you, NWI, AJ, all the guys, how much trust do you have in Ryan Tannehill to be the leader and to, and to carry you through what could be a little bit of a tough stretch, just not having your horse, not having the guy that you expected to have carrying the football for you? Oh, uh, we have the utmost trust in him, man. We, uh, we have a, we all have a great relationship. We talk, we communicate, and um, like I said, it, it's it's so much time that we've invested in this that uh, when things do go wrong, we don't panic. We we just find a way to uh, stay stay tight knit, continue to trust one another, and we know that he's going to go out there and you know he's a he's a general on this team and on the offense, and he's going to lead us in the right direction. So we trust in him, and we make him plays when we uh, get afforded the opportunity. Yeah. Um, also, this this team has been doing a whole lot defensively. I know you play offense, but when you sit on the sideline and you know your defense got an opportunity to stop somebody or get a sack or get an interception, man, what how do, what what kind of confidence does it give y'all sitting on the sideline watching them do work? I love watching it. I <laughs> love the energy that that the uh, the D, the D line, the front that we have, man, Big Jeff, uh, out there clogging things up, man. It, it's a beautiful thing to see, seeing the type of year that KD's having right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it, man. I love seeing that, and we feed on that. When they go out there, man, they're getting all these sacks, interceptions, PBUs, whatever the case may be, uh, we feed on that as an offense, and then we go out there and we just build on that momentum. And I think uh, the defense has been playing outstanding, and that's been a, a huge key for our team and our success. Another thing, Marcus, and this is something that coming into the season we weren't as sure about, but look, you always want to score touchdowns, but when you don't, how good does it feel to be able to trust your place kicker in a league where that can be hard to find? I mean, Randy Bullock has been yeah. – he's been lights out for you guys. Like, you guys are not having yeah. a whole lot of empty trips because of how effective he's been. Man, Brent. And then uh, Brent Kern. Yeah. The he's been putting the ball and helping us with field position, man. Those two guys have been so pivotal for us. And, and Randy came in this season and hadn't looked back. He took advantage of the opportunity. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, we're definitely thankful for those guys, and we don't take it for granted. So, wait, so you're you're 27, right? Yes. Okay. So, Des Fitzpatrick played yesterday. Yeah. And he's another wide receiver, young guy that you know they they moved up to draft him, and then it didn't go all that great in training camp. Has have you talked to him? Have you been able to speak to him? Because it looks like a lot of people are saying really good stuff about him now that he's worked hard, kept his head down. You're a guy that's been around for just a little while, and you've had to earn every rep that you've had as well. So I'm just curious if you've, you know, been able to spend any time with the young fellow to to get him ready. Absolutely. You know, I mean that that's one thing that I feel like I bring to any locker room is just a, uh, you know, I'm a man of God, mm-hmm. but before anything, and just uplifting my teammates, and if they need anything, you know, being there for them. So, you know, when he's been going through his ups and downs and dealing with different things, I've been right there just to encourage him. And I love the resilience that I've seen from him mm-hmm. to to go from training camp. And, man, this, this is your first year in the league. You're trying to figure it out. And then just to keep chipping away. Uh, and now he's been promoted. He's over, he's back on the roster. And uh, and, he, and he's shown it. He's proved it. And he's earned all of it. So you can't take that away from him. And I, and I believe he'll just keep getting better. We'll keep having his back. And I'm excited to see him out there. And I was super excited. You know, his first game out there, you know, it's emotional for him. And just tell them, man, embrace it, enjoy all of it, and, and just keep building on it. Mm-hmm. Um, w- one thing's for sure, uh, Marcus, is, is um, free agent, undrafted free agents in this league have, a, you know, they got to overly prove themselves all the time. Me, myself, former undrafted free agent also. And just, I got to ask you, you say, you know, you spend your time on special teams also. And the kid, Dylan Cole, or Dylan Cole, yesterday, getting that forced fumble, Oof. you had to have been happy for him because you know the role that he plays you know, being an undrafted guy, you got to prove yourself over and over again, man. Just speak on that hit that you could hear at the top of the stadium and just the momentum that he made for himself on making a play like that. I'm trying to tell you. It was <laughs> it was actually kind of crazy because we came out from halftime and he was like, man, you know, keep doing your thing. And I was like, man, do the same to you. <laughs> and then next thing, next thing you know, he run down there, boom. <laughs> yeah. Force fumble. Get the ball back. You were, that was 
man, that was huge. And I was one of the first people, as soon as he made that hit, and we was trying to figure out, you know, they were trying to get through the uh, – who, like who had possession of the ball. And once we found out it was us, man, everybody must have – we were already, t- like, pumped up. But yeah. we, everybody swarmed them, and, you know, he was feeding on that. But I, I love that, man. Like like you said, being undrafted, you know, everything is earned. Mm-hmm. And that play right there – was a, a major momentum uh, shift for us to, to open the half like that. So I was happy for him to be able to make a play. So we could hear it on the Titans radio broadcast. Could you hear that hit that led to that fumble? Because it it it, it, it was jarring just yeah. watching, and I can't even imagine being on the sidelines that close to it. Yeah, no. You, <laughs> it, it was funny because you heard, you heard it, but then you see, like, the jerk reaction. You see everybody's head turn to, like, <laughs> the exact direction of where they hit the play, like, where you heard it. So, boom, we turn around, and then you see the ball out. We're yeah. like, man, who was that? Who did that? Yeah. And he get up. He flex and turn the – so – yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool. So one thing we know for sure is when he started flexing, you knew who it was. Yeah, you knew exactly who I'm made the play. You, this, this, what is he doing in the exactly. weight room? I've said it like seven times on the show this morning. This dude is jacked. Okay, is he? Does he have dumbbells by his locker? Man, I don't know, but he definitely he must he must do some push ups and curls for the guy because he wasn't playing. <laughs> you just confirm what I thought. Everybody sees Dylan. Dylan Cole, we we starting to call him Hollywood. Yeah, we're calling Cole. him Hollywood Cole, Marcus. Holly, Hollywood, he is Hollywood, hey, Hollywood Cole, shout out. I'm going to start calling him next time I see him. He Hollywood took his shirt Cole, off. I he, heard that. That's the word around town. 